there! Today I'm here bringing you a video to tell you what my hubby and I have planned. Um, as you can see, I'm chopping up some potatoes and I'm going to chop some more vegetables and jalapenos. And if you look over here, we're cooking a great big pan of ground beef. What my husband and I have decided to do is we are going to make some homemade TV dinners. I um, have a rare autoimmune disease that affects my muscles and it makes me so I feel like I have the flu most of almost every day I don't feel good and I also have pulmonary hypertension which makes it so I can't breathe very good and I have to be on oxygen when I'm up and about so the normal ordinary chores that most people do like cooking and cleaning are really hard for me to do and so my husband and I, there are many times we're empty nesters and there's many nights when we are ready for dinner and there's nothing for us to eat and we're hungry and it, it's just really been a problem for us. And so I thought about it a lot and I said, you know, we could make, make ahead TV dinners and put them in the freezer and eat them up. So that's our plan. We've made a plan this week, went to the store, got everything we need, and um, we are going to make shepherd's pie, and we're going to make a Pioneer Woman spiced up version of tater tot casserole. My husband loves tater tot casserole. I do not. So we're going to try this kicked up version and see if I like it better. And then, um, I'm going to cut up a lot of vegetables so that we can have some fresh vegetables with dip throughout the week for snacks. I've cooked some hard boiled eggs that I want to eat for breakfast every day. And um, I, I'm, my new goals for this year are to try to eat more vegetables and to try to eat more protein. I want to incorporate, well if you can see, let me zone over to here. I have my All-American out. It's been sitting there because I want to can some beans. I want to be able to add legumes to most of my meals because they're such a good source of protein and so good for us. And I just haven't felt well enough to do it yet. But I'm going to. Um, one of these days I'm going to get up and get it done and it's going to be a good thing. So. Anyway, that's our plan. He's cooking the hamburger uh, or the ground beef and I'm chopping up some potatoes for the shepherd's pie. The jalapenos will go in the kicked up, well these are serranos. We like things pretty hot so we're going to chop those for the um, tater tot casserole and um, then I'm going to chop an onion for it too. Uh, we also want to make burrito bowls with some rice and um, some beans, black beans, and uh, ch I'll have chicken. He wants ground beef. That's one of the reasons we're cooking so much. And um, <clears throat> we won't get to that today. We're going to have to do that on Thursday. And I want to make a rice and burger uh, dish that we love too and we'll have all these TV dinners that are in the freezer. Uh, what we'll do is eat the meal when we make it that night and then put the rest in the freezer and we can take out the food that we want to eat when we're hungry. So Okay, we're at the next phase in our cooking. I, My husband's got the hamburger all browned and the potatoes are ready to be mashed for the shepherd's pie. I put in a half a stick of butter and I'm going to put in a little bit of milk. And I'm just going to rough mash my potatoes. These are Yukon Gold potatoes, but you can use russets or I've used uh, red potatoes too. If I use red or Yukon Gold, they call them yellow potatoes in the store sometimes. I don't peel them because the skins are real fine and um, 
it's they taste good. If I do russet potatoes, I peel them, but I always mash them the same. As you can see, this is just a rough chop. We kind of like it like that. So, and this shepherd's pie recipe is the one that my mom has made since I was young, little girl, and I'm I'm almost 60 now. So, the only thing I do different than she did is she used tomato soup and I use tomato sauce. It's a real plain recipe, nothing fancy, but it's delicious and we all love it. So I can't see changing something that's so good. I use a can of corn, um, just a can of drained corn. And sometimes that's the only vegetable I use. But if I only use corn, I'll use two cans. And then I bought a, a package of frozen peas and carrots that I'm going to add this time. You just dump that in. And then this big, this big pan of hamburger. Look how much hamburger we have. <laughs> Lots of hamburger, but this is for three different meals. So I know it's a lot, but it takes quite a bit to make the casseroles. And if if I have extras, I will just put it in a container and put it in the freezer and take it out at a later date for something. This is this is really good lean. It was 93% I think lean hamburger. So I think that should be enough. And I just put it in there and then I add my tomato sauce. I'm using three eight ounce cans. The hamburger meat was probably equivalent to about two pounds. The potatoes, I cooked about 10 small Yukon gold potatoes. And there's lots of potatoes there. I might have extra, but if I do, I can put them in the fridge and we'll just eat them with something else. Okay, and then that was three cans of the eight ounce tomato sauce. And then I just mix this up. I wish my nephews were here. I was in my sons and my grandkids. I'd love to feed them this. It gives me joy as a grandma to be able to feed my kids. I'm sure all of you grandmothers can relate. And all of you moms, it's the same as with your own children. You love to take care of them and nurture them. All right, and then we're just gonna pile this, these potatoes in there and just make a big layer of potatoes. Now a lot of people stop at this. They cover it a little more and then, then they stop. I think I'll put one more scoop right in the middle. And then they stop and they bake it. But my mom didn't do that. My mom always, put cheese on top, and so that's what we're going to do. I should have pushed this over so you could see it better. I'm so sorry. Is that better? Anyway, I'm going to put some cheese on the top, and then we'll bake this. Now, if you were going to take this casserole, make it ahead, and freeze it for your family for a later day, I would stop here and I would cover it really good with um, some some plastic wrap and then some tin foil after that and put it in the freezer. Um, but and then when you take it out of the freezer, I would put it in the fridge overnight and let it thaw. And then I would take it out and cover it with the cheese and put it in the oven and bake it. But for me. We're making TV dinners and we want it all the way done. And then after we take the TV dinners out, we'll just put them in the microwave and just warm it up that way. And so I want to cook this all the way. So I'm going to just layer my cheese on the top. I'm just using cheddar cheese. My One of my sons works at a cheese factory and so I, I can get cheese for a really good price. Um, so that's one of the blessings we have in our life. Um, anyway, that is the casserole. 
we'll throw it in the oven and bake it at 350 until it's all hot and bubbly. Uh, anyway, that's how I make shepherd's pie. Now, the next thing we're going to do is make the tater tot casserole. And um, I've never made it this way before. It's all new. So what we're going to do is in the same pan we cooked the hamburger meat, we're going to take the hamburger out and we're going to fry these up in some butter. It's an onion, two serrano peppers. It calls for jalapenos, but we don't have any, so we're going to use serranos. And uh, about four cloves of garlic. And this is an Anaheim pepper. I think it calls for a poblano, but I have some Anaheims, so I will use those. It also calls for green, chopped green pepper and chopped mushrooms. I don't have either of those. So we're just gonna go with this, and we're gonna fry them up in a frying pan and then thicken it like a, like a gravy. So I'll get these frying and then I'll bring you back and show you what it, how we thicken it and what it looks like. Okay, we've got this all fried up now. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of flour so that we can create kind of a roux. Kind of the same, it's the same concept of what you do when you make a gravy. You want this to be able to make a thickening. Um, a lot of tater tot casseroles that I've made have called for cream of mushroom or some kind of cream soup. This one, you're making your own gravy essentially for the, for the casserole, which I think will taste so much better. We're gonna just let that cook. I probably added two to three tablespoons of flour. I think it could even, I like to make sure I have plenty. I want it to be thick enough, but not too thick. And then you're going to want to cook this for a few minutes, probably two, a couple of minutes is all. Uh, we want to make sure and cook out that raw flour taste in our, in our mixture. I like to put some pepper in my gravy and a little bit of salt, not much, but just a sprinkling of salt on it. I'll let this cook out for a minute. And then we're going to add some uh, whole milk. Um, I should measure this. I don't have a measurement with me. That's probably about a cup. That's probably about two. I would add about two cups of milk. And we're just going to let this heat up and turn this into a nice creamy gravy. It shouldn't take too long. It just takes enough time for this milk to heat up and it should start getting thick. And then we're going to cook it for just a couple of minutes after it starts to thicken. See how that's starting to thicken in the center already? I actually need to turn my burner down a little. It's cooking pretty hot. You want to stir this so that your gravy doesn't burn on the bottom. This is pretty thick. I think I'll add just a tiny bit more milk. That's about a fourth of a cup more, probably. We don't want it to be too thick. Now it looks about right. So I added two and a fourth cups of milk to this vegetable and flour mixture. Okay, now this is really thick and about ready. I think I... The next thing I need to add is a, she put some sour cream in hers, which is a different concept, something I don't do. So we're going to put probably half of this about. Let's put um, this is a 16 ounce 
container, we're going to put half that in. You just need to stir this together and then it's ready to put in their casserole. She said she zings it up with soy sauce. So let's put a little soy sauce in. She didn't say how much. So I'm guessing I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of each. Then she adds Worcestershire sauce. And then she adds some Tabasco. That gives it a nice browner color. I really just want to taste this. See what that did to it. Let me see. I think I will. I'll have this big spoon here. I think I'm just going to taste this mixture. Mm. It's good. It's different than what I anticipated. It definitely has a little kick to it. You can taste the we're sister in there, but you can taste the onion and a little bit of Tabasco. It just has really good flavor. I really think we're going to love this. Okay, I'm going to bring you back in just a minute after this gets good and bubbly. All right, this is done. Uh, as you can see here, I've put about two pounds of hamburger into my container. Um, then I've added one can of corn that I've drained. I'm going to add this mixture right on top. Doesn't that look good? All thick and yummy. Then I also am going to add a package of tater tots. This is a 32 ounce bag of tater tots. I think it's going to make a delicious casserole though because the flavor of the soup that I made up is, that gravy is delicious. Now this looks just a little bit dry to me. I'm going to pour some milk in the bottom of this. I think I'm going to add about three-fourths of a cup of milk to this. You don't want your, your mixture to be too dry. See, that's a little bit runny now, but when I mix it with the whole casserole, that looks much better. What she does that I don't normally do is she adds a little bit of cheese to her tater tot casserole. So I've added about a cup of cheese to this. And uh, we'll just bake it through and see how it turns out. I think it might be really delicious. So we'll bake these up and we'll bring you back. Let you know how long it takes. This one will go into a 350 degree oven too. And we'll just let it bake until it's done. We want the cheese melted and we want it hot through. And I'll time it when we put it in. And I'll let you know exactly how long it takes. My husband just pulled the casserole out of the oven and I just wanted to show you how good that looks. It's, it was all bubbly and browning a little bit. See how the cheese is a little bit browned a little on the edges and looks like it splattered on the handles. <laughs> But it looks really good, so it's very hot. We're going to let it cool off, and we're baking the other one. When they get ready, we'll bring you back and put them in the containers and show you how we do it. Okay, here's the tater tot casserole. Hubby just took it out of the oven, and uh, we're going to let it cool now. And then we'll take both casseroles and put them in our um, containers to put in the freezer. I'll bring you back then. Okay, the casseroles are all finished and loaded up ready for the freezer. I just wanted to show them to you. This stack right here is the shepherd's pie. As you can see, we got seven, um, seven of them, seven servings. And my husband and I each ate a serving 
all ready for dinner and so it made a lot and then we got seven servings um, all of the rest is the, the tater tot casserole and we got seven servings of that and my husband ate a serving of that to let us know how he liked it also so I have a total of 14 dinners or lunches or um, whatever we want these for and so we're pretty happy about it on Thursday we're going to do some burrito bowls and also I need to chop up my vegetables for the week I didn't get that done today and we're going to make some breakfast food um, breakfast for dinner will be our plan and possibly some spaghetti I have some meatballs in the freezer that I made about a month ago and we may make a fast pot of spaghetti with meatballs and make some more dinners for us so anyway I just thought I'd let you know I'll put the recipes down below in case you'd like to uh, make these and uh, we'll just talk to you again on Thursday or Friday I'll post a new video of our new TV dinners <music>